Oh, that men should praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work. How many of us have something good to give God thanks for? Amen. Thank you. Psalm 107 from verse 19. He said, He sent His word and healed them deliver them from their destruction. Oh, that men should give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving giving and declare his work with rejoicing. Is there something in your life that resonates to your heart that you should give thanks to God about? Hmm? 23. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters? It is thanksgiving that multiply your business IQ. Are you hearing me? That same psalm Go to verse 29. He said, He calmed the storm so that his waves are stilled. Then they, then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. These are what begins to happen. He said, let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turned river into wilderness and dry springs and water springs into dry ground. He turned river into wilderness and dry springs, meaning where you thought there was a river, God can turn into desert. Then he said, are you seeing that scripture there? Yeah. Where you think there is oceans. I've gotten too much that not even God can make me poor. That's what some people will say. The Titanic built his ship and said, not even God can sink this ship. The first day the ship went on trial, the testimony of that ship, that is the day it collapsed. Because God can turn a river. Please put that scripture there. Turn river into wilderness. A wilderness is a place where you can't see flood at all. At least we saw it in our days where Dubai, that is a dry desert, there was flood. Are you hearing me? He turned the water spring into dry ground. Then look at the next one. A fruitful land into barrenness. For the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns wilderness into a pool of water. Meaning your life can be dry. God can turn it to abundance. Amen. He, are you seeing that? He turned river to wilderness, and it can turn a wilderness to river. But the secret is, oh, that men should praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. May thanksgiving not depart from your mouth, Amen. from your heart, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 103 from verse 1. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. When you are blessed, when your soul bless the Lord, it's not your mouth. 
is a song that comes from within. It's gratitude that comes from within. It's an inner communion. Are you hearing me? The one the worship team just did now, that is what you do with your mouth and with your spirit if you are aligned. But when nobody is there, in your trial, in your joy, whatever the situation you find yourself, what is your soul saying? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Why? Two, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. If you remember the benefit, he will give you more benefit. Are you hearing me? If you don't see any benefit, you will be empty of the benefit. I've been emphasizing a word recently. Those who have, more will be given. Is that what Jesus said? Those who have, to them, more should be given. And he said, those that don't have, even the little they have will be taken away. So you must always have. I have something to give thanks for. I have something to give God glory for. Ask your neighbor, do you have anyone? If you don't have, even the little you have, I will take it. <laughs> so God, check if you have anything to give thanks for, for him to multiply. I've never seen God, even Jesus, while he was on earth, doing miracle with nothing. He always do miracle with something. You have to have the five loaves of bread and two fish. Elisha asked the woman, he said, what do you have in your house? You are in debt. She said, nothing. She said, but only but a jar of oil. He said, that's what we need. Are you hearing me? What do you have in your hands? See, don't have it. <laughs> if God does not see anything, he won't do anything. He asked Peter, and they said we should pay tax. Yes. What were you doing before? I was a fisherman. Carry your hook. Go back to the stream. You will get a fish there. God will always bless you with what you have. Make sure every day in your life there's either the five loaves of bread and two fish or there's that, that little jar of oil. It must be there. Jesus came to Canaan of Galilee. He said, you could have wine. What do you have? Water. We have water. Okay, feed the water pot. You have something. Are you hearing me? In my life, I have a reason to praise. In my life, I have a reason to praise. In your life, I have a reason to praise. In my life, I have a reason to praise. In my life. In your life, in your family, in your business, in your career, in South Africa, in your health, in your life, in your family, in your career. Account. I have a reason to praise the Lord in your life. I have a reason to praise the Lord in Jesus' name. As far as you have a reason, you will always have reasons. So shall it be in Jesus' name. All right, the Lord said, Thou will arise. Psalm 102 from verse 13, that we arise and have mercy on David Uche for the time to favor me. He said, yes, the set time has come. Now, in that scripture there, write mercy. After you write mercy, write your name. Your name is the Zion. 
then write time under mercy your name time favor set time very important set time meaning to every man's life there's a set time everybody will be great too it's just the timing that is different ah you don't know are you hearing me may you not miss your set time set time means seasons change in Genesis 8.21, it said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Summer and winter. From verse 20, 22, why the earth remains, seed time, that means seasons and harvest. Cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Nothing can stop timing in life and season and purpose so Ecclesiastes 31 said to everything there is time and there is purpose to everything under the earth so everyone God created there is a time and purpose for them Ecclesiastes 3 from verse 1 said to everything there is a season then he broke down season season means there is a time for every purpose under the earth season means time and purpose season means what? I'm not hearing you. Yes. That's the meaning of season. Meaning, when it is your time, the purpose of God for you must manifest. You are doing man or amen. When it is your time, be it there's an enemy or there's no enemy, your purpose, there's a purpose for you. Your existence, there's a purpose. Are you hearing me? You are not here by chance. You are not in life by chance. You were not bettered by chance. You were not created by chance. And for you to be alive now is not by chance. Are you hearing me? Because there's a purpose. That's why you are still existing. There's a purpose. In fact, any day you woke up, you wake up, just remember, ah, God still have a purpose for me. Maybe the time is not set. But the purpose is guaranteed. I'm praying for you this season. You will not miss your time. In the name of Jesus. You will not miss your season. In the name of Jesus. Any tree that is planted knows that even if mango is planted, mango is not worried because pear is bearing fruit now. Mango knows that he has his own season, his own timing, and his own purpose, his own vitamin. When the time for mango comes, everybody forget Pierre. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you always think mango is irrelevant. You focus on Pierre. Immediately mango come, everybody remove their attention from Pierre. Say, oh, mango, today is your day. And I, I pray for you. Your time, your time, your time, your purpose, you will not miss it. This season is your time. This season is your purpose. In the name of Jesus, I hear the good news for you. You are in the right place, at the right time, at the right season. In the name of Jesus. Siran, I was... Somebody shared our video of our live stream of 2022 during this kind of time, 2022. And I saw yellow chairs were very few. And it was winter, so winterfied. And I saw how scanty the place was. And I checked today. You, you don't know why I say you are in the right place at the right time at the right season. The God that did it for this ministry is visiting you this season. Oh, I'm not, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? See that verse. See the overflow one. You see that place. Just imagine those people that are there 
all of them sitting inside here. That's how we were. 2022. Go and check that video. You will see. And we space the seats. Those congregation overflow one were the one in this old auditorium. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth Shall I make it known From the rising of the sun Right until it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Now, let's see the overflow too now That time, that place you call overflow too Nobody was there at all Nobody was in that overflow one what if, if we close and say no we can't continue anymore what if we stopped out of frustration there is a set time and there are purpose those that are clapping is your season and those that are watching, after the, after the first people, your own is coming behind. Are you hearing me? Just took off like a tornado. We don't know how. It overshadowed us. It overwhelmed us. That is what is called time, purpose, season. You don't do anything. It's not you. It's in the Father's will. It's in his power. Act of the Apostle 1 from verse 8. Starting from verse 7, they were asking him, he said, Lord, go up to eight, uh, 6. You know, sometimes you ask God questions, say, therefore, when they have come together, they ask him, say, Lord, will you at this time give me my breakthrough? Hmm. Will you at this time change my story? Will you at this time bless my business? Give me marriage? Then see what Jesus answered there. He said, seven. He said, and he said to them, it is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Oh God, I don't know who I'm speaking to now. Oh my God, Maradish Kadizo Valatos, Gaya do Sevelata Maradish, Kranga Bagazuze Veleta, Jinta Mezuze Valato, Rakte Belede Sozevanga Baradish Kota. Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. Kando Sese Sefekete. You need the strength to continue pursuing so that you will not give up because times and season is set under the authority of the Father. It is in His sovereign authority to choose. It takes a lot of humility it takes persistence to wait for the timing of the Father. Lord, I know you have a purpose for me. Help me to be patient in your timing. Pray that prayer with all sincerity. May you not die before your time. May you not quit. May you not give up. Pray that prayer sincerely. 
Harati Susu Kakako Belata. Hayato Melazizo Velata. A lot is waiting for you. The Lord has prepared a table for you. He has prepared paradise for you. In his own time. In his own season. In his own authority. You might be going through pain now. You might be going through difficulty now. It might look as if your life is not going anywhere. There's a purpose. There's a purpose for you. Being alive, there's a purpose. For you to be breathing now, there's a purpose. Harati suze kakatu. Shekti palatonde. Zukeke kato. Rakito melzinze velandish kato. You will not quit. You will not give up. For there is a purpose for you. In his set time, he will make everything beautiful. Hey! Raktan gagigan gugagabelete. John de Bunze Baladiaco. Aradishko Belendi Sobelecate. Rakabeli Konde Garadish Kota. Rambeledi Sobalata. It is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in His own authority. Hey, Akamelani Sozevelata. In Jesus' name. In Ecclesiastes 3.10, he said, He makes all things beautiful in his time. I have seen, I have seen the God-given tasks which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he puts eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that God has done from the beginning to the end verse 14 whatever God does is forever that's it I know whatever God does it shall be forever so nothing can be added to it nothing can be removed from it God does it that men should fear before him whatever God does is meaning whatever he has prepared for you Nothing can take it. Amen. One prayer I will always pray. When I read the story of David, Saul was chasing David from the day he was anointed. He started chasing him. Started to, tried to kill him three times. And David was running. In the book of Psalm 31, First Samuel 31, when the last days of Saul, that was when David, uh, 30, David went for battle with his men. And before they returned, his children, the army, everybody were captured. The place they left their children. And when they returned, all the soldiers, they were crying. The 600, his 600 men and himself, they were crying. The Bible says they cried to the extent that they were exhausted, that they don't even have power to cry. And the Bible says the men were thinking of stoning David to death. The Bible says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. 
I pray you have that strength. Amen. That little strength is what will carry you to that your time in. Amen. And he asked God, should I pursue? He said, Abiata, where is Abiata the priest? Give me the effort. He didn't tell the priest to consult for him. He asked God, he said, should I pursue this truth? When he was crying, God did not speak. Should I pursue? Will I overtake? God said, pursue them. For you will surely overtake and without fail recover all. Immediately he took those men and went for that battle. That was the, the next day Saul died. His enemy that was chasing him for many years, for 15 years, Saul had been chasing him. The day he was supposed to enter his throne, before that day was when he was feeling exhausted. Because it seconds to when your life wants to change. You won't even know. God does not move like, um, he, he does not announce it carnally like when a president is moving, you see many escorts making noise. No. The siren of God, when he wants to change your life, he does not make noise. Life. When God remembered Job, say God restored Job, the captivity of Job, Job 42 from verse 10. He said all his acquaintances, his brothers, his sisters, they came and they were giving him gold. One day, you are not hearing me. He said, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friend. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, where were they since? You don't know that Job had brother. He had brothers. It's not only that brother. When he was having so scraping himself, we only heard that it was his friends that came to cry with him. We didn't know where his brothers they were. Even at when it's not your time, even your brothers can avoid you. Your families, yeah. It will look as if you are not existing. And the Bible says, Job friends, you can't you can be a very wealthy man and have poor friends. So it means those are three friends. You're also rich. Why didn't they help him? They were crying with him there. In fact, they were even saying, Job, you are righteous. That's why this thing happened to you. They were blaming him. When it's not your time, everything will look as if it's against you. And all his brothers, his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintance, friends and family, loved ones, they gathered, came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord has brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of horses, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jamel, the name of the second Kezia, the name of the third Kerin Apus. In all the land, we had not found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children grandchildren to fourth generation. Amen. Timing. Purpose. When God blew your whistle, the whole world will pay attention to you. The spotlight will be on you. Are you hearing me? If you go to a, a show, you see that the whole congregation, they darken the distance. Then on the stage, they'll put something called spotlight. God have a spotlight that will announce you to nations. Yeah. Yeah, are you hearing me? When God blow his whistle, the Bible said in the book of Zechariah that God have a whistle. He said the Lord will blow his whistle. I never had, you thought it's only you that have whistle. God have whistle. 
May God blow your whistle. Amen. If it's not Zachariah 10, it is 8 something, I don't know what. He said, the Lord shall blow his whistle and gather nations. Zachariah 10, 8, yes. I will whistle for them and gather them. You see that? For I will redeem them and they shall increase as they once increased. Amen. The whistle. Amen. God will blow your whistle this season. Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't like the image that you're doing here. <laughs> so it's not only you that whistle. This is it. It's not only you that whistle. As you are blowing, may the Lord blow your whistle. Blow your whistle. Blow your whistle in the name of Jesus. That's enough. Everybody, blow your trumpet. Blow it anyhow. <laughs> I'm praying for you this season. May the Lord blow your whistle in the name of Jesus. Say so this season, the Lord is blowing my whistle. Amen. Amen. Worry people say if God blow your whistle, even if it's rapper, you tie, you will play in the match. <laughs> you don't understand it. You don't understand the parable. <laughs> Rapper, cloth. Even if it's blanket, you are tying. If God blow your whistle, you will future in that soccer match. Don't wear your spots, we are just tie rapper. <laughs> are you hearing me? So God honors you. When it's time for God to honor you, He Himself qualifies you. Are you I'm not hearing your amen. I say, may God blow your whistle. Amen. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, blow my whistle. Oh Listen, <laughs> if God have not blown your whistle, Facebook cannot make you popular. You are not hearing me. It can't. Not social media at all. If you like boosts, nothing. It is the whistle that makes everything respond. If God has not blown the whistle, you can be listening with a president in the same house. You can have a mayor's phone number on your phone. Your brother self can be a president. He's not looking at you. You just went to him and said, listen, I need this, I need, I need this business to do. He would say, ehm, there's no money now. He said, eh, please, PA, give him 5000 In your presence, somebody else will come. And he will write a check of $50 million to that person. If you really want to know the truth, those that you call millionaire billionaires, they don't really have families, though. Uh, you don't know. They can have a blood brother, blood sister, and they are not paying attention. Yes. But there are other people that they are favoring. It's not that they are wicked. Set time. Set time. Amen. Thou shalt have mercy. Amen. Thou will arise and have mercy on David Uche. You don't know your name. If you don't know your name, call my name, please. He said, for the time to favor, he must come. Yes, the set time. Hear me, hear me and hear me very clear. God has prepared mercy for you. Amen. He has prepared favor for you. Amen. But you only meet it at the set time. 
And the day of your set time. That's why I said it's a covenant. There's something that is just a covenant. It's something God has had covenant with us. That will always show us mercy. Are you hearing me? He said unless you can stop my covenant with the sun, with day and night. Before you can stop my covenant that I have with David. That's what he said. Let's see Jeremiah 33. Let me, let me just shift you small into what we are talking about. From verse, Jeremiah 33, from verse 20. Is it all says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with, with day and my covenant with night, so that there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant. What is he trying to open your eyes to see? That sometimes you see the sun going down. The sun is setting. The sun is not scared of setting. He knows that you can't stop him from shining. You are not. I, 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 I just lost somebody now. It's a covenant. You are laughing that it is darkness. It is night. You think I will not come out again? <laughs> Rejoice not over me, my enemy, when I fall. Because I will rise again. It's a covenant. Whether you see yourself in darkness, you are not supposed to be shaking like the sun. If the sun is not shaking and crying, what is going on? Why will you shake? It's, God said, I have a covenant with the sun. That is, I have my covenant with you. Are you hearing what I'm seeing? He said, then my covenant may also be broken with David's servant so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne and with the Levite, the priest, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David Uche. I, I know you don't have name. You are looking like Jollof Rice. These things are not fake. They are real. When the angels of the Lord, three of them, visited Sarah, they said, now you are barren. But according to the time of life, that angel said, I will return. Ah, I will return. I will return. I will return. <laughs> Let them, they thought, they thought you are already set back. They thought you are already behind. I will return. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm teaching you what you should commune with your heart with. Our topic is the Holy Spirit and communion. Holy Spirit and communion. Holy Spirit and what? Communion. Holy Spirit and? Communion. Holy Spirit and? Communion. And? Communion. and communion. Because man is the communion he has with himself. Your life will reveal the communion you have with yourself. The reason why the Holy Spirit, because you, man was an, is, is, is a communion being. Communion means intimacy, fellowship, communication, and sharing of feelings, spiritual feeling. Are you hearing me? What is communion? Now you go home, you say you didn't learn anything. What is communion? Again? All right, 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 right. Is sharing or exchanging of, of, of intimate thoughts and feelings. Sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings. Especially on a mental or spiritual level. He 
it also means strong emotional or spiritual feelings. That's what communion means. It also means communication. For us to commune with God, to commune with God means you speak to God and God speaks back to you. That's the meaning of communion. So that's the meaning of communing with God. It's not that bread we eat, only communion. It's not that, that small bread you eat and do. No, it's beyond that. Are you hearing me? Is you talking to God and God speaking back to you in, from within. It's a fellowship. The Bible says bad communication corrupt good manner. It means it corrupts good life. So you're, as far as human are communion being, you were created to be a communion being, to have communication, to have fellowship. All creature, both demons, they want to commune with you. So you must be very careful. You are not hearing me. See First Corinthians 15, from verse 33, I think so. Do not be deceived. Yes, do not be deceived. Give me King KJV. He said, yes, a bad community. See that? Do not be what? If you don't talk, it means they are deceiving you. Read it. Uh-huh. Ah, bad influence. That's the meaning, bad influence. Do you know why women are called helpers? Women, if you want to know the Holy Spirit very well, just take your time to be looking at women. If you have anyone in your house that is behaving in sister, monitor them. They, they have a lot of characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Man is position minded. You were created, man is created to be position minded. Women is created to be influential. A man can say, make sure you call me the head. I'm the leader, of, I'm the head of this house. You must know your place in this house. Man always look, think position. So that's why if you are calling me, my Lord, my Let me give you a buga. And women, they, they, they influence you. You don't, you won't know. Oh, you, you don't know. An influence is more powerful than position. Because the power of influence comes with enticing. They entice you. That man that used to say before, uh, you know, you know, I, I, I don't eat this, I don't eat this. Wait, after some time, the well, she will just say, test, test, test. Before you watch that same food you say you don't like, from testing, you will be swallowing it. Be careful with your wife or when you are men. <laughs> be careful of the person you choose as wife. Because whether you like it or not, they don't, they don't, they don't struggle with you. Say, do it. No, no, no. In fact, if you are even struggling with a man, that's when you lose. You, you whisper it softly in his ear. Adam. Eat the apple. <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, you, you, you think the devil does not have sense? The serpent. Why didn't he go and talk to Adam? He know there will be argument. Adam, no, 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 don't, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> So he commune with the woman, then the woman influenced the man. <laughs> Read 
your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. All the powerful women that finish men, they didn't carry sword, they don't carry knife. They just talk. <laughs> like Jezebel told Ahab, don't worry. Sleep. Eat. That land will be yours. And they have really slept. He didn't want to eat before. He was tired because of the land that he wanted that he didn't get. The wife said, don't worry. I will get it for you. Just eat. Sleep. And he slept. The woman went, killed somebody and said, the land has now become yours. <laughs> A very strong man called Caesarea. He was fighting in the book of Judges. And the war was against him. And he was running for his life. And a woman saw him when he was running. Her name is Jael. When she saw Cecilia running, she said, Come. Are you tired? Come into my house. I will hide you. And the man went there. And she put pillow for him to sleep. And covered him with blankets. And the guy said, Please, if anybody is coming, tell them that you She said, Don't worry. And the guy was exhausted. And she said, I will not give you water. She gave him milk. <laughs> After the guy downloaded milk, he was not sleeping and snoring deep sleep. And she looked for a peg, sharp nail, put it in his temple, and nailed him to death. influence of women be careful is it not Ahab, uh, uh, Rehab is Rehab that sold out uh, Jericho because when those two spies came they came to her house she hid them on her roof when they were looking for them she said nobody came here they came and they've left look for them if they would have caught those two spies, Israel cannot de destroy Jericho. One woman. Just one. <laughs> Let us pray for our president, Sue. <laughs> but the truth is, whether you believe it or not, all our leaders is the women that... Give them. Say, don't you think you should increase the fuel price? <laughs> they have influence. Some of you now, when, they, when you wanted to get married, they told you the man is the man of the house. You say, yes, I'll be the man of my house. I'll be the man of my house. Today, is your wife that is the man of the house? She's, uh, uh, yes. When, when she came into your house, you used to leave your, your shoes somewhere. Now she's the one telling you where to put your shoe. And it's your, <laughs> and it's your house. To the extent that sometimes, if you, if you put your clothes somewhere, maybe you scatter the kitchen, and you hear she's coming. Big man like you, you run and go and be packing your things. You are under a spell. <laughs> it's called wife spell. Every woman has spell. You don't. <laughs> you are not hearing me. Women, this is an advice to you. Forget about position. Master your influence. Are you hearing me? Don't drag. Let them claim to be the head. If they say they are the head, say you are the head head. In fact, you are the headmaster. In fact, your name is Edward. Are you hearing me? May God give women wisdom. <laughs> Amen. 
Don't you see that? Although Jesus is the head of the church, Christ is the head of the church, he could not win the whole world himself. That's why I say, I will go. The comforter will come. Do you know the influence the Holy Spirit has taken all over this world now? When Jesus was on earth, he only had few people. He was just in Palestine. But now a revival can be going on in Nigeria at once, in South Africa, in America, everywhere. Revival. Influence, influence. It's, the, it's what the Holy Spirit came with, influence. You are not hearing me. So when you are choosing, when they choose wife, just don't be stubborn to say nobody can change me. No, no, no. You better choose. When you, what, whatever you see your wife doing, that's who you will become. <laughs> she likes to watch India. You don't like it. You, you, if I, you'll be asking her, where's the new season of? <laughs> One man was driving his car he, in his plate number. He didn't put numbers. Though. He said, after God, fear women. <laughs> so if that man have a story to tell you, if you, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if, you can, if you can sit with that man, there's a lot that man will tell you that. They are, they are, the women are help me too. If you really listen to them, they can change your life. And if you get the bad one. But I believe everybody here is good. Yeah. I believe all the women we have here are the best. Is 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 Sarah that told Abraham, see my maid, sleep with her, have child with her. Abraham, oh, that was the only man of God before. Fear, we, oh God, you don't understand what I'm saying. I don't, I don't get what I'm saying. Mighty men, oh, we are counting now, not small, small men, mighty men. Abraham, now say, I should sleep with her, yeah. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> All the days of Abraham, everything he used to ask God. This time he did not ask God anything. <laughs> Listen, oh, when the woman had, had the child, she became angry. Sarah was, became angry in the house to show you that she's the one controlling the house. She said, I'm not happy with this woman. And he told Abraham, chase this bond woman and her child. And do you know what? When Abraham went to meet God, God said, do what Sarah told you. When God was creating his word, he rigged the system against men. He favored women more. He, you don't know. When Nigeria say life, no balance. It's women they are talking about. This is in, is in the advantage. It's always on the advantage. So in case you are not married now, be careful, Lou. And those that have married, in case your wife is driving you crazy, now so you, that's how it was planned. It was, it, was, it was planned like that. You can't run away again. And if you have to, if I don't even think this one is causing problem, let me go and have on that one. It's the worst. If you read the book of uh, First King. I think from verse 11. Solomon, all the wife he married were serving different God. So Solomon did not serve one idol. He was serving like 10 idols. All the wives showed him their own. So, 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 <laughs> so, 
Solomon, Solomon will serve serpents today. Tomorrow he will, he will worship queen of heaven. Next morning you see, so oh king, oh, his wife will say, this one we are going to the river, the other, this other one, to, and you have to tie only rapa. And it's in the midnight. So Solomon will tie rapa in the midnight. Oh king, the one that God says, the wisest man on the earth. Oh. Okay, no, let's read. You think, you want to think. Look, see first king 11 from verse 1. But king Solomon loved many foreign women. As well as daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, Sidon, and the Etites. From the nation of whom the Lord has said, the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after all that God. Solomon clung to this in, lo in, in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. His wife. Wives. Not demon. No. Ah, you're not hearing me. Wives. He said, for it was so when Solomon was old that his wife turned his heart after other gods. So if Solomon had how many wives? 700 wives, 300 concubines. Meaning all of them have their gods. Solomon was having 1,000 gods. Because he's seen now, he said, Gos, I not seen it there. Tomorrow, Solomon will kill goat for, for, for the river goddess. Next tomorrow, he's facing the sun. Next tomorrow, he's romancing a tree. Next tomorrow, all, you are not hearing me. Any way they are doing it, he follow them. Why is King Solomon who? That wrote Proverbs. That was writing the fool. The fool. He wrote many things about fool and wisdom. Meanwhile, he became a fool. Ah, fear, may you fear strange woman. Amen. If you read um, Proverbs 5, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, Solomon was warning us about strange woman. Meanwhile, he carried them in his house. Yes, read Proverbs 5, 6, 7. He said, be careful with the seductress. Meanwhile, he packed them for hours, lodged them around, and he's writing about them. <laughs> May God save us. Amen. Men, men, I'm praying for us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, the best way to win or get the best from women is communication, intimacy, fellowship. Intimacy does not mean intercourse. That's why some people, they have, you have ex, exes that when you talk to them, you feel at peace more than your wife. Yes. Because there is a communion comes with the conversation. Are you hearing me? What really keep home is that communication we are talking about. So Paul was writing a benediction in 2 Corinthians 13 from verse 14. He said, the grace of our Lord Jesus, meaning the finished work of Christ. That's the meaning. The love of God. What manner of love? First John 3 from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That is the meaning of the love of God. 